Hi, I'm Andrew Henderson from Nomad Capitalist in Tbilisi, Georgia. Here to talk a little bit about the importance of your passport's reputation. This is something that we hear from folks every so often here at Nomad Capitalist. They're looking for a second passport and one of their concerns is that the passport they have right now may be alright for travel, may give them certain benefits, but it has a bad reputation. Uh, a lot of the people who come to us with this challenge are from the U.S., they're from Israel, they have problems going to different places, and so I want to talk a little bit about that. Now, we recently put out uh, our first annual Nomad Passport Index, where we ranked passports and we ranked citizenships. And one of the criteria, one of the lower weighted criteria, was the reputation of the country. How welcome are you as a citizen of X country when you're traveling overseas? And I'll tell you, uh, this matters in a couple of ways. One of the ways that comes to mind is that countries don't always necessarily enforce the visa rules according to the law. So I recently went to Indonesia. I said, hey, here's my passport. It's now on the visa-free list. They said, I don't think it is. Uh, maybe you should get a visa on arrival. Maybe you should go over there. Maybe you should pay a fee. Do you want to wait? We'll check into it. They were very nice, very friendly people. But ultimately, they said, you know, do you have another passport? I said, okay, here, you know, use this one. Okay, yeah, we know that one. And even though the passport I was trying to use was on their list of 169 visa-free countries that was recently updated, they didn't know it. There aren't many people from that country going there, and so they weren't up, they weren't educated, they weren't updated. And so could I have pressed the issue? Possibly, who knows what would have happened. Um, I think that's the case a lot of places. I mean, you look at the news in the United States as of late, even after judges um, took down uh, Trump's travel ban, Muslim ban, whatever you want to call it, there were instances like Muhammad Ali Jr. where, you know, they were making life difficult for him, allegedly. So I think that the reputation of your passport is important because it's important to know uh, just beyond the official information beyond the law, beyond just what does the law say, can you come to the country? If there is a travel ban, if there's a Muslim ban, if there's just uneducated people at the border, that could impact your passport. And so that's, in that case, one of the reasons to have a, a more well-known passport, perhaps, but definitely something to keep in mind. Another issue is uh, passports that are just not as well received. So different people do studies on which countries are well respected around the world. Uh, Ireland and Norway and a lot of those European smaller countries are high on the list, Switzerland in some cases. Um, the United States and Germany and some other countries don't rank as well. The UK, I think, is in there. It's not saying everybody hates Americans or hates Brits or hates Germans, but it means that they rank a little bit lower. People love the Irish. They're very well respected pretty much everywhere. Um, and again, part of that is maybe the other side of the coin where there just aren't as many Irish. And so people um, just have a generally better opinion. But nevertheless, how warm is the welcome that you will receive uh, based on your passport? If you've got a U.S. passport or another one that people don't like as much, you may have more of a bureaucratic issue, you may be hassled a little bit, or in extreme cases it, it may be a problem um, of a more severe nature as we saw with some of the hijackings back in the day and with people who just look out for people with certain passports they don't like. And so the last issue on reputation is, is not so much a reputation issue as it is a visa-free travel issue, but you have countries like Israel, for example, uh, where they are subject to a ban uh, on travel to certain nations. not saying I agree or disagree with that, but it is a reality. Israeli citizens cannot travel to a number of countries, including a few like Malaysia, where they need approval now uh, beforehand if they want to go. You know, that's a reputation issue. Certainly there are plenty of Israeli business people who want to go, do business in Malaysia, be happy, get along with the culture. Malaysia doesn't want them to do that. So there have been some Israelis who have come to us at Nomad Capitalists and say, what can I get as a second passport because I want to do business in these other countries, in these Muslim countries. They don't want me. How do I protect myself? So this is why, and there are other reasons, but this is why the reputation of your passport matters. This is why we covered it as one of the ranking factors in the Nomad Passport Index, which you can uh, find at nomadcapitalist.com. Because sometimes what's written in black and white in the law isn't followed. Sometimes the actual practice is different. And how you know the passport you carry will impact the kind of service that you receive. You know, I can tell you that as, as much as 
We talk about the downsides of a U.S. passport. There are a lot of places in the world, from banks to immigration uh, counters, where a U.S. passport and other Western passports can get you a long way because people don't think that you're there to do anything wrong. Um, you know, having a U.S. passport and going to Malaysia or many other countries, they basically just wave you right through. Even some places in Europe, when flights come in from the U.S., they just kind of wave everybody through. So there are different factors. This is not to say that a U.S. passport is something that you should be avoiding at all costs, because the U.S. passport, in some cases, has a great reputation. Uh, in other ways, not such a great reputation. But do keep this factor in mind when you're traveling, when you're doing business, when you're banking. Everyone looks at you differently. Again, some banks in the Middle East look at U.S. citizens and say, yeah, these guys are really clean. We love them. Other banks look at U.S. citizens and say, FATCA, Ugh, lots of paperwork. We don't want them. So it can go both ways no matter where you're from, but it is something important to keep in mind, and it's something that we put in the Nomad Passport Index for that reason. Definitely subscribe here on YouTube if you want more videos, and check out nomadcapitalist.com for more on second passports.